Hey guys, today I'm going to be reviewing another Debian based Linux distribution. That distribution is called Crunchbang Plus Plus. Yes, that is Crunchbang Plus Plus. Now, uh, a few weeks ago I reviewed a distro called Bunsen Labs Linux. Bunsen Labs was a continuation of the old Crunchbang Linux. Crunchbang Linux was a Linux distro of years past. It uh, was based on Debian Stable. It featured a very nice customized uh, open box window manager session with uh, the Tent 2 panel, Conky system monitor. You know, it's a fully set up open box session in Debian Stable. Crunchbang was. And Crunchbang had a large following. It was a pretty popular Linux distro until it shut down, until it you know reached its end of life because the head developer I guess decided to, to move on so that project shut down but there were so many people that loved that distro you know there were a lot of forks of Crunchbang and uh, the most popular one uh, the one that you heard the most noise about was Bunsen Labs which I reviewed a couple of weeks back but I've also been hearing a lot about Crunchbang Plus Plus which is another fork of the old Crunchbang Linux, you know, another effort to continue that old Crunchbang Linux look and feel. So I'm going to download Crunchbang Linux and install it inside a virtual machine today. I'm going to download their 64-bit ISO and install it inside VirtualBox. Alright, so I've downloaded the ISO and we're going to be installing this again inside VirtualBox. So our boot menu here, we have the option of Live, Live Failsafe, Install, Graphical Install, and Advanced Options. I'm going to go down here to graphical install because I assume most of you probably will run through the graphical installer rather than the text-based installer. Alright, and here is the Debian installer. It has chosen English as our language, that's correct. I'll click continue. Set your location, it has chosen United States for me, that's correct. It has chosen American English for my keyboard layout, that's correct. All right, now it's loading installer components from CD. This will take a second. All right, it's configuring some network stuff here. It's asking us for our host name. By default, it has chosen Debian. The Debian installer always chooses Debian as the default host name. But I'm going to choose, you know what? Since I'm running Crunchbang plus plus, Crunchbang plus plus as my host name domain name I'm just gonna leave that empty I don't really have to choose a domain alright set up users and passwords full name for the new users I'm gonna choose CBPP Crunchbang plus plus for my username short and simple username for the account CBPP that works too and we need to give that user a password click continue all right, configuring our clock. It has chosen the Eastern Time Zone in the U.S. for me. I'm actually in the Central Time Zone, so I'm going to correct that. Click Continue. All right, it says detecting disk, partitioning disk. Now we haven't run through any kind of disk partitioning yet, so okay. Here's the screen for that. We can choose guided, where it uses the entire disk, which is what I'm going to choose. We also have the option of doing manual partitioning if you need to manually set up some partitions. Say if you want a separate home partition or if you're dual booting alongside another operating system such as Windows I'm just gonna give Crunchbang the entire 16 gig hard drive of this virtual machine we have the option of all files in one partition that's what I'm going to choose but again we had the option of creating a separate home partition I'm not gonna do that inside a virtual machine because that ends up being wasted space you don't know exactly you know how to set up the partitions you know uh, what you give to the system and what you give to the home uh, for such a small hard drive, you know, I, I can't do that in a virtual machine. I might do that if this was a real install, though. I like having a separate home partition. It makes sense. All right. By default, I gave this machine six gigs of RAM. The, this virtual machine six gigs of RAM, and apparently the Debian installer always creates a swap file the same size as the uh, the RAM you gave it. So 6.3 gigs is the swap it's going to try to create. That is a gigantic swap for a 15 gig hard drive so I need to either make this much smaller or just delete the swap altogether I'll probably just remove the swap I'm gonna go down here I'm gonna delete the swap partition 
Now, on a real machine, you wouldn't need to do that. I mean, six gigs of swap space. Most of you guys have hundreds of gigs on your SSDs, and if you're running spinning disk still, you probably have you know a two terabyte drive on your machine. So, but for this virtual machine that I'm running, you know, just testing things out, and I'm only given the virtual machine 15 gig hard drive. I can't have a six gig swap. It makes no sense. So I'm just going to delete all the partitions it created. It created that swap and that extended four partition. I'm going to go ahead and just create a new partition, just one big partition. Give it the entire 16 gig hard drive here. I'm going to make it primary. We'll let it go ahead and use the extended four file system. Click continue. And now that I've got the disk set up, we select the option here, finish partitioning and write changes to the disk. So, Alright, it's warning me I didn't create a swap partition. Yeah, I, I know that. So, do you want to return to the partitioning menu, you know, to create your swap? No, I don't. I'm not going to create a swap on this machine. Alright, now it's warning me it's about to write changes to the disk. Do we want to go ahead and Write, uh, format the drive and write to the disk, yes. And now the installer is going to run, probably take about five, ten minutes to run. I'll be back. All right, so that installer ran. Now it's asking me, do we want to use a network mirror? So this is a mirror to pull down, you know, all your updates or whatnot, you know, to connect to the Debian repos. Yes, you do want to connect to a network mirror. You need to choose yes here. All right, configure the package manager. It wants to know location again, again, to get the fastest mirror. You need to tell it where you're at so it can you know, locate the closest mirror to you. I'm in the US, so I'm going to click continue. And the mirror that it's chosen for me is the ftp.us.debian.org mirror. So I'm just going to leave that. All right, then some proxy information. I don't need to fool with that. Now it's configuring the apt package manager. And this may take a few minutes. All right, now it needs to install our grub bootloader and asks us do we want to install the grub bootloader to the master boot record yes we do you always need to install a bootloader alright where to install it slash dev slash sda it's the only place to install it on, on what I did and this will take a second alright and the installation is complete we need to re reboot the machine and load up our freshly installed crunchbang plus plus I'll be right back all right, I've rebooted the machine. We're loading up our newly installed Crunchbang Plus Plus. So the username I chose was CBPP. And enter my password, and here we are in our newly installed Crunchbang Plus Plus. Now, before I continue, uh, you you guys didn't see it on camera. I actually had to go through the install process a second time. Uh, after that first install that I did record on camera, when I installed the Grub bootloader, either I did something wrong or it, it just failed to install properly. I had some problems on boot up. When I, so I went back through the install process very quickly. I just took all the default settings. I even let it create the uh, 6 gig swap file uh, just to get the install done quickly so I could get back here. So I actually ran through the installation two times, but I'm not going to fault Crunchbang Plus Plus for that. I might have messed that up when I was installing the Grub bootloader. But anyway, when you first launch Crunchbang Plus Plus, we get this optional post installation script. We saw this same optional post installation script when I reviewed Bunsen, Bunsen Labs Linux. They say this post installation script is optional. It really isn't. You really need to install everything that it's going to suggest for you to install. It's going to you know, uh, sync you to uh, some, some repos that you need. Uh, it's going to install some extra software, some third party proprietary software that you really need for a proper desktop experience. So you do need to run through this post installation script. Uh, if it takes anywhere the amount of time that it took for me to run this post installation script on Bunsen Labs, you know, it, it might take me half an hour, maybe a full hour to run through everything that's going to go on in this post installation script I'm not going to do that on this video so I'm just going to close this out and continue with my review of Crunchbang++ here 
Now, without me running through that post installation script, I probably would not have been able to get the VirtualBox guest editions going. That was probably part of what was going to be fixed in the post installation script. But uh, I can deal with this screen resolution here for the purposes of this review. So, CrunchBang++. Again, it's a continuation of the old CrunchBang Linux. And it looks very much like CrunchBang Linux did when I ran it, you know, five, six years ago, whenever you know, CrunchBang Linux uh, was still alive. You know, it is the open box window manager, so we have a right click menu. So let me open up our file manager. You know, this is the open box window manager, which is the frame around the window and the right click menu that is open box. Uh, we have the tent to panel. This panel at the top here is our panel. So if I click this icon, it minimizes the window and then unminimizes it when I click it again you notice that the panel is divided into two sections this section is the first desktop this one that has the number two in it is our second virtual desktop again first desktop second desktop first desktop let me close this out open box the open box window manager by default has this right click menu this is where your menu is your uh, you know start menu if you will it looks like CrunchBang has it populated with the run program command here to execute a, a command so we could, you know, launch something like, well, the file manager we just launched. They're using the Thunar file manager. If I just type Thunar here, you know, it launches our file manager. So that's how the uh, run prompt works. Our terminal, let's see what terminal they're using. Let's see. Looks like they're using Terminator. Terminator is a fine terminal, kind of lightweight, but fully functional terminal. Web browser. Let's see what default web browser they're using. They're using Mozilla Firefox. That's going to be an older version of Firefox there because I didn't run through that post installation script to update the system. Text editor, they're using Genie as their default text editor. Media player, they're using VLC. Great. I love that they include VLC on the ISO, on the uh, default installation. Under accessories, it looks like we have some of the XFCE uh, programs installed. We have the Catfish File Search, the Archive Manager, then we have uh, the Genie Text Editor again. We have our HTOP program. This is your, your system monitor. This is a terminal-based system monitor, which if we check it out, I gave this machine two cores to run on. It is using 1.3% of one core and like 0.7% of the other. I gave this machine 6 gigs of RAM. We are only using 225 megs of RAM right now and that is after I opened up several programs here. So really low memory footprint. So I, I really like that. Um, under accessories we have our terminal again we have the Thunar file manager again. Under graphics we have GIMP installed. GIMP is your Photoshop you know, alternative. It is a free and open source kind of uh, graphical editing program, very similar to Adobe Photoshop. We have View Noir as our image viewer, and then we have our screenshot utility with options to take a screenshot now in five seconds, ten seconds. Under multimedia, we have VLC again, we have our volume control, and we have XF Burn. XF Burn is XFCE's disk burning utility. Under network, we have our browsers, which Firefox is the only browser. We have the option of installing Chromium or installing Google Chrome Stable also here in this menu. So that's cool that they included an easy, you know, just one click install. FileZilla is a FTP client. Most people don't need a FTP client. That's file transfer protocol. That's for uploading files to a uh, remote server, like a web server. Transmission is our bit BitTorrent client. That's the standard BitTorrent client in the GNOME desktop environment. HexChat is our IRC client. Also under network we have remote file systems, we have our remote desktop, we have the option of installing anyway the VNC server for our remote desktop. SSH, we have edit.ssh slash config. Uh, Dropbox, we have the option of installing Dropbox here in the menu. Alright, under Office we have LibreOffice, it's not installed but one click and it'll install the LibreOffice suite. Google Docs, AbbeyWord, which is a lightweight minimal word processor. Numeric, 
which is a lightweight, minimal spreadsheet program, calculator, and Antrel PDF viewer. Now they include these lightweight Office programs, EbbyWord and Numeric, but I do like that they included this option to install LibreOffice right here in the menu, because if you have a modern computer with plenty of hard drive space and plenty of you know CPU and memory, you probably do want to install Le the LibreOffice suite because it's it's really the best Office suite available for Linux. But for older computers, if, if you can't you know, you don't have the, the disk space for something like the full LibreOffice suite. Abbey Word and Numeric are fine programs. All right, under Places, this is basically our directory hierarchical structure. Uh, all I do is click anywhere on any of these directories, and our file manager opens up. For example, under Music, if I click Browse here, the Thunar file manager opens up in my Music directory. So that's how the places menu works here. Under recent files, I haven't opened up any files, but this would be a list of our most recently accessed files. Settings. We have settings for our compositor, for the Conky system monitor that lives on the desktop here, for D menu, for those that are not, do not know what D menu is, it's, it's another run command prompt program. Uh, GM run. We have options to configure the open box window manager itself such as they have the GUI menu editor here. This actually edits our, our menu, our right-click menu here, so we can add and remove stuff from the menu. All right, under, what were we, settings, we had the tent 2 settings, so we can configure the panel, display settings, notifications, edit default apps, user interface settings, power management, screensaver, choose wallpaper. Let's see what wallpapers are installed by default on Crunchbang++. Plus Plus. So it looked like they have some like standard Debian wallpapers. I know I've seen some of these in the past. They really don't have much installed for wallpapers. Uh, and a lot of it is just some, you know, abstract art or some very plain, like, you know, textured wallpapers. They don't have any, like, nature photos or anything like that. All right, this one here actually says Zubuntu 10.10. .10. So why do they have a Zubuntu wallpaper in Crunchbang++? And if you were going to include a Zubuntu wallpaper, why are you including one from seven years ago? That's strange. Anyway, I'm just going to go with this gray bird wallpaper. I've seen this wallpaper before. It's a nice wallpaper. All right. Under system, we have uh, printer settings. We have our G-parted partition manager, and we have the synaptic package manager. So for a graphical package manager, they have chosen the synaptic package manager, which uh, you see in a lot of Debian-based uh, distros. The synaptic package manager is a very nice graphical a package manager. You can install and remove software with Synaptic. You can add and remove repos. You can update your system. You can upgrade the system. You can do everything you need to do in Synaptic. For those that don't want to, you know, do your standard app to install, app to remove, app to update, app to upgrade in the terminal. All right. So what is my final verdict on Crunchbang Plus Plus? I love it. I, I really do. The install was fine. I, I did have that one issue again. It was off camera. After the first time I went through the install, I rebooted the machine and you know, there was a problem with gr the grub bootloader. So I actually had to install it twice. The first time, you know, I went through that graphical install and I played around with some of the partitioning and stuff. I might have messed something up. But the second time the install went smooth. Everything seems functional. So I give the install process an A. It's your standard Debian installer, by the way. So you know, if you've ever installed Debian, most of you guys probably are familiar with, with Debian. Uh, the install is pretty easy. The actual desktop here, the w open box window manager session that they have here, is gorgeous. I love the very minimal, you know, desktop here with the tent two panel, the cocky system monitor. You know, just your standard, you know, minimal programs like the Thunar file manager and the uh, Terminator terminal. The Genie text editor is a, is a fine text editor. Uh, the one thing I will say that I like about Crunchbang++ that I did not like about Bunsen Labs was the version of Debian that they base on. 
Bunsen Labs was based on the old stable Debian, Debian Jesse. That made all the packages on Bunsen Labs ancient. Crunchbang++ is based on Debian 9, Debian 9 Stretch. So, although some of the packages are going to be older, again, it's based on Debian Stable. It is based on the latest Debian Stable, you know, Debian 9 Stretch. It is not based on Debian 8, Jesse. So, Crunchbang++, as far as the desktop, I give it an A++. Check out Crunchbang++, guys. Peace.